Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Janet Wallace. I'm the moderator for the town of Kingston, and this is your special town meeting preview. Special town meeting will be held on November 13, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Kingston Intermediate School. There will be 15 articles that will be covered. And um, just to cover one issue, there was, as you all know, there's a um, Citizens Town Meeting Committee who's been working very hard and diligently to um, enhance town meeting for the town of Kingston. And they've made a couple of recommendations. One of their recommendation is um, that I'm going to implement is to ask questions of people. So at the beginning of every motion, I will ask if there are any questions so that people will get up and ask questions first and then move on to debate. And hopefully that will maybe minimize um, some of the um, activity on the floor. The other is, is that I wanted to let everybody know the committee has been working on the electronic voting. So I wanted to let you know that in the past, um, when we had our prior town meeting committee, there was too, just really too expensive. It would appear now that uh, many towns are getting it. It's about $20,000 for about 420 units if you buy it. And maybe um, working with the committee that they can um, arrange to have a demo um, done for this spring town meeting. So that would be another advancement that I know that they've been looking at and in the past that we have looked at as well. So let's start with the articles. Article one is the Kingston Police Patrolman's Union contract. The patrolman union have been without a contract since approximately January of 2017. The contract has been negotiated and the article provides for $308,000. It's to grant, the Board of Selectmen have advised me that it's um, $22,500 per patrolman per year for the three year contract. So each patrolman over the course of three years would be $7,500 increase to sell, to pay. Then there's also, on top of that, plus the base rate adjustment, COLA, which is the, the typical rate um, increase that would be occurring, and that will be a 1.5% for fiscal year 18, because again, this is a retroactive contract, 2% uh, for uh, fiscal year 19, and 2% for fiscal year 20. There's also some additional monies in there. All of that will cost $259,895.09. That also then will, there'll be additional approximately 37,000 for overtime, an additional uh, 9,200 for training, and an additional 1,600 for, for uniforms. Again, that's the Patrolman's Union contract, Article 1. Article 2 is the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 30 contract. This is the sergeant's contract for the Kingston Police Department. And it's my understanding there'll be no motion on this one. That contract hasn't been finalized yet. The Article 3 is the International Association of Firefighters Local 2337 contract. This is the Firefighters Union contract and they have been without a contract for approximately a year and a half. That contract has been negotiated and the article is providing for $315,000. The Board of Selectmen have advised that that's $3,000 per firefighter per year for three years. So that will net out at um, $9,000 over the course of the three years for each firefighter. Plus a base rate adjustment, Kohler, again, this is the uh, cost of living adjustment, which is the annual, uh, or is typically the annual income raise. This will be 1.5% for fiscal year 18. Again, it's a retroactive contract like the patrolman's contract. 2.0% for fiscal year 19 and 2% for fiscal year 20. So that total cost for the firefighters union um, salaries will be $260,127.02. And then there's also an, um, an additional in here for overtime costs. That will be $55,346.64. So that is the Article 3 uh, firefighters union contract. <clears throat> Article 4 is the fiscal year 19 operating budgets. This article is for supplements to the operating budget for fiscal year 19 for unforeseen events that were not planned prior when we voted the budget last year. This is using uh, $70,000 of a $75,000 insurance recovery fund from 2016. I don't know what that insurance recovery fund money came from, but it's insurance money that we received in the town of Kingston, and they're now going to apply it in three different ways. So the first one is the um, Harbor Master, and that will be for overtime, and it's $1,000. It's to be pro 
provide for 20 hours for unexpected callbacks that have occurred and then they also built in some float in there for an additional hours needed to open for the season as a result of potential winter storm um, damage so that's planning for this winter and potential winter storm damage that may occur so there's a little bit built, built in there it's a thousand dollars the second is data processing, and this is to up, um, it's uh, for $33,623. This one, um, ladies and gentlemen, is the IT manager is out on medical leave, and employees of the town of um, Kingston, which is quite lovely, have contributed their sick leave to this individual so that she can stay out longer and that she will receive her income while she's out on the sick leave. So the employees have contributed their sick time and, um, and to this individual. But as a result of her being no longer available to the town of Kingston and to, at the, the town hall, what the Board of Selectmen have done is hired a consultant for 30, approximately 33000 uh, to fill that gap while the IT manager is still out on medical leave. So that's a $33,623. The last item is the streets, trees, and parks, and that is an equipment lease and purchase that is for $35,372.65. This would be year one of a lease of a five-year lease. So it would cost, my understanding, $35,372.65 per year for the next five years. This is year one of that lease, and this is for the, um, to replace the two year 2000 front end loader. Um, so this is replacement of the year to uh, f f annual year 2000 front end loader. The other issue that might come up, and I um, have a call into town council, I'm not sure, because this one now is saying majority vote. My understanding, though, is under the lease that that's considered borrowing, and thereby that might become a two-thirds vote. So if that happens on this particular Article 4, we'll break out items 1 and 2, which are a majority vote, and then vote number 3 separate, which requires the two-third vote. That's what we traditionally do when there is a difference of um, voting category. Again, I'm not sure that, will, that that does apply. It's just um, something that... Um, tickled with me yesterday, and um, I will confirm that with town council. Article 5. Article 5 is basically prior year bills. Like Article 4, the remainder of the insurance re, um, proceeds that the town of Kingston received, which is 3000 because there was, a, I believe it was a total of um, 75000 that was received in the first article uh, used up of just um, shy of 70,000. This article is gonna use up an additional 3,000. And this is to pay outstanding bills that crossed over the fiscal year 18. So in other words, it wasn't paid in that fiscal year. So as a result, the, um, the town meeting has to vote to authorize the payment of these bills. And the bills are, Conservation, it's for consulting services for a survey invoice to Robert Scarzi for $1,000. General fund, which was workers' compensation, so this is workers' compensation balance due, and that is $775. For the planning board, it's for advertising to Gatehouse Media, and that's $847.40. Weights and measures, this is for training for membership actually in the NCWM and that's $75. Facilities is for contract services for pest control services, and that's $280. Facilities, tools and supplies, it was facility sp supplies at Ace Hardware of $19.45 for a total expenditure under this article of $2,996.85. And this is indicating a 9 tenths majority vote on this one. The Article 6 is to adopt Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 58. This is to adopt um, and impose a municipal char um, charges lien. Right now, um, this would permit the lien for unpaid rent on town property. And so it's to strengthen the town of Kingston's ability to put liens on property for unpaid rents for um, people. So this is like a, basically it's about the town amending um, own land being leased to vendors like the KWA. And it's like the KWA turbine. So that would allow us to put a lien if they um, didn't pay their unpaid rent. And this is going to grant um, the town additional power. So it's adoption of a Massachusetts general law. Last is, uh, not last, the next is Article 7 and it's to adopt Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 39J. 
And again, this is to adopt a bylaw will allow the commission, the sewer commissioners to receive additional points on the applications, potentially increasing the odds of re receiving low interest state funding. What this is about is advantages in financing if, need, if needed in the future borrowing. Um, by adopting this particular statute, we can do all that we can to achieve the cheapest borrowing rates and the lowest interest rates in the future. Article 8 is to adopt the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 80, Section 13B. And this, again, is an adoption of a statute to allow a mechanism for the sewer commissioners to enter into a deferral and recovery agreements for betterments. This is like Chapter 59, Section 41A. It allows people who qualify for deferments in real estate taxes um, to defer rather than go into default. So you can defer payment of your real estate taxes if you qualify under specific conditions instead of going into default and then it's under tax title taking, which is then a 16% interest rate. So this is going to allow that this deferment under real estate, if you can claim and you're applicable, you meet the standards, you can defer your taxes, you can set it aside, but there is interest that applies, but it's 8% instead of the 16% under the tax title taking. So it's 8% until the property change of ownership of the property or the property sold or um, whatever occurs with that, then it's paid in full and the lump sum is paid in full, but it's at 8%. And again, it's for specific people who meet specific standards under the, um, under the uh, you know, requirements for that particular statute and this will incur the same. This adoption under Chapter 80, Section 13B will allow deferment of the sewer betterments on property to allow under the same logic. So rather than it being um, tallied and running and, and at the higher default um, interest rates, this will allow it to be deferred at a lower interest rate and paid again upon the transfer of the property. Um, Town of Kingston has to adopt laws to be able to, do, to offer this benefit to taxpayers in Kingston. So that's what the adoption of that general law will be about. Article 9 is the manganese treatment plant. The manganese treatment plan is seeking $600,000 from the Water Deve Department Stabilization Fund, which is their savings account, and this is to pay for engineering and permit costs. So it's the beginning, the engineering and permit costs for a water treatment plan. So this would be engineering and putting it all, all together as a package, which would then be eventually um, presented to town meeting. This is for the grassy hole well um, that's up at the mall in Independence Mall up there by the old, um, the second fire station, Smith's Lane Fire Station. And as you all know, we have seven wells in the town of Kingston. If you'll recall, the Trackle Pond well down on Route 80, that was voted prior for at a prior town meeting where they built it. It was built approximately, I want to say, about five years ago, and it was financed over 20 years. So we're probably about 15, five years into that, 15, 15 years more to go. And that uh, Trackle Pond was also a manganese treatment um, plan in order to deal with that well. This will um, start the process for the anticipated, I understand it to be a $7.5 million construction project to uh, clean up the well water for the manganese issues that have arisen. Article 10 is a uh, no motion. It's, um, it was originally going to be for borrowed funds for septic repair and sewer connections. And it's my understanding that that's not going to happen. It's not going to be moved. It is not going to be moved. Um, but that's been resolved at the last time Board of Selectmen's meeting um, I was just at. Article 11 is the fire department's portable radios. This is for $4,000 for 28 radios to, for the fire department. The cost is after the federal grant of $77,000. So the total cost for the 28 radios is really $80,000, but the town of Kingston is getting them for $4,000 because the chief was able to get a federal grant for $77,000 to finance the other sums of money. So that's a wonderful attribute for the town of Kingston, 28 radios for $4,000. Article 12 is human resource managers hours. This is the HR, um, as you know, we have an HR benefit eligible employee at 27 hours now. 
This is to increase that individual's hours to 35 hours. It will not change, I've been advised it won't change the benefits because she, uh, she's already eligible at the 27 hours, so this is just the increase of an additional um, eight hours to her time on a weekly basis. For this year, um, the cost of that will be paid from um, the Board of Selectmen is um, transferring $8,000 from accounts from fiscal year 19 that were unused and that was um, the highway department special town meeting there was funds for the transfer um, reconfiguration of the transfer system for three thousand six hundred and twenty dollars and twenty three cents and then there was the highway department article 13 of annual town meeting at may of 18 was for through two thousand ninety nine dollars and twenty five cents and then there was the original the i believe this is the final insurance proceeds from the um, transfer to the general fund of 2,147.92. I believe that's the same one that we were dealing with on the prior articles, the remainder of those funds. After that, the costs for this will then uh, be added to the general budget line item for HR. It'll be then added to the general budget line item at that point in time. Right now, this is to take the monies from another um, 8,000. It's um, exact sum is $7,867.40. Article 13 is a donation of land. This is to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept donation of land from a developer. This is part of a planning board plan where they made a requirement and this developer would transfer small parcels, they're very small parcels, to satisfy special permit requirements. So they receive special permit requirements, they have to now donate and have this land accepted and then they can release the properties um, from the uh, special permit requirements. The re property is to remain as open space, so to be added to the open space um, the open space land that the town of Kingston already has, and they need town meeting approval in order for the Board of Selectmen to accept that donated land. Article 14 is transfer for the Municipal Waterways Improvement Fund. This is $20,000 from the Municipal Waterways Improvement Fund to purchase three shock detecting buoys to be placed in Kingston Bay. These were the Board of Selectmen advised me that these will be real-time shock buoys, in other words, when the shock's coming up, you get real-time notice and you can actually get notices, um, notification on that. Reverses in the past has been buoys that are, it records the information of shock passage, but you don't get the information till later. This is real-time action for those buoys, um, which will be beneficial for um, Harbor Master, other people, and I believe it's gonna be eligible for citizens to be able to have it on their app so that citizens will know what's there when they're in the Kingston Bay area. So the last article, but not the least, this is Article 15, the Assessor's Consultant. The Board of Selectmen are seeking authorization for $30,000 to hire outside help to identify new accounts to be taxed. The consultants to go out and um, capture accounts and the, that the assessors have not been capturing in years. The cost of this article is um, 20, I'm sorry, just looking down, $30,000. The cost of this article is $30,000. And I'm thinking hearing around town that this, I think, will be a very heavily debated article. And um, so we will hear from people uh, further about this article at town meeting. Again, it's $30,000 for a consultant for the um, assessor's office. So I thank you for joining me in this, <clears throat> excuse me, this preview. I want to remind everybody, <clears throat> excuse me, the special town meeting is November 13th, 7 p.m. at the Kingston Intermediate School. I hope to see you all at the meeting. Again, would love to see and have more people. I want everybody to know a few things, that I did receive an email from the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Elaine Fiore, that the lighting has been done in the, in the room, so hopefully that's gonna have a better illumination for all of us. All of us, I know a lot of you are unaware of it. <coughs> Excuse me. But when I'm at town meeting, most of the time I can't see people in the back right here and the back left over there. I can, literally can't see faces, and um, so this will make it Hopefully that's going to make it streamlined a little bit easier. I've also been advised by Elaine that um, there will be the town, the school is working on Wi-Fi to be, they're working on the Wi-Fi in the auditorium um, that it be amplified for better cellular and data reception for all of you who attend town meeting. 
I'm also excited. We're gonna I'm gonna keep the same two minute time standards and, um, and for people, I think that's worked. I believe I've used it approximately the last two or three town meetings, and it allows people to get up in order to um, debate properly, debate and have articles, um, information on articles and debate being done on the floor. But it also doesn't uh, permit the ongoing rambling that sometimes can occur. So as a result, hopefully that will um, continue to work. And then I think, like I indicated, indicating about the additional um, asking questions first, so information can come on the board, on the floor for people to digest, and then debate can ensue. So that's going to be a wonderful. I am going to be attending uh, town meetings for the pro and con mic, and we will go from there at that point in time in regard to how does that pro and con mic work. I know Kingston's never used it. It will be interesting. And however, I will say that I don't want to make a lot of changes all at once. My intent is if it works, then I'll do the pro and con mic at the spring meeting. However, if the committee is um, great and able to get the town, I shouldn't say great, they've been wonderful, they've been doing a very diversified committee and it's been very informational and very interesting because it is diversified. So the in information is that if they can um, get the demo even set up for the spring one, I'd like to roll that out first. I think electronic voting is exciting. I think it's the wave of the future. It's where we're all at. We all know technology. And uh, hopefully that can work and then we can have that for the spring town meeting. And um, then we can look at and try it. If we can get the demo done, we can try it before we buy it, so to speak. I recommend anybody that's interested to go out to other town meetings um, that have it. I know Duxbury has it. I believe Middleborough. Um, but I know Duxbury for sure has it. So if you want to look on their website, you can probably attend, as we do, have citizens that just get to attend that are not um, voters in the town of Duxbury. They have a wonderful system so that you can see how it works, where everybody has their own handheld unit. And then uh, what happens with that is any time I call for a vote, the vote happens. And then there's a kiosk that the um, town clerk and I work with in regard to the results tally in. And there's a specific timetable, in other words, for you to be able to enter your consider and then enter your vote, and then it's calculated, and then we read the tally from the equipment. So it, it's very interesting. I've been to um, a couple of town meetings with it. It's very interesting how it works, and it would eliminate the um, one call vote. Uh, and number two, but more importantly, I think it's the one that most people feel apprehensive about is you don't mind your call vote, but you mind having to raise the card up when I have to do the call because of two thirds, sometimes it's very difficult to make that call from hearing, even though I am permitted to do that. And sometimes even on the call vote on a regular majority vote, it has to be counted. And that takes time. And I know one of the things that everybody is most interested in is moving town meeting into um, a quicker um, aspect. So that's all of our goal, and let's make and see if we can't make that happen. So I just ask everybody to come to town meeting, be prepared to be succinct in what you want to raise. Um, there's no reason to keep repeating what everybody else does. Literally, as we laugh, you can get up and say, ditto, I agree with that, and move on if you want somebody to know your particular view. And then the last item I will let everybody know is uh, we are going to move forward with the motion to amend. So please review your motions, and I mean the motions, article motions in advance so that you can come to the meeting with your written motions to amend so that we don't have that delay time on the floor. I have checked with um, town council because I was concerned about the fact that when somebody makes a motion to amend, what that does is, is that becomes the primary motion. So the motion on the article, which is always the primary motion, gets dropped down and the motion to amend becomes the senior motion. So as a result, there's no other uh, debate that can occur on the, on the on the article motion until the motion to amend has been debated and voted. So what will happen is if somebody makes a motion to amend, I will then lay it on the table and we will go on to the next article uh, in order not to delay other people's time while somebody's writing it. Now that more happens, comes in, if everybody can be prepared for their motion to amend in advance and have that available so that when you get up to make your motion, you can come right down front with your written motion and hand that in. The secondary will be is, as you know, sometimes there's motion to amend on motions to amend. 
So because what happens is once the motion to amend, if it's allowed, it amends the main motion, which then becomes the primary motion again. And then there's a new motion to amend. Well, sometimes people don't know what's going to happen on an amendment on the floor. So as a result, you can't really be prepared to come to town meeting with that motion to amend, you know, to amend an amended motion. So as a result, what we would do again is lay it on the table, move on to the next article so that we're not delaying everybody's time, and we can have that motion to amend written up and then come back to it after that article is concluded and go back to the prior article. So I wanted to take some time to explain a few things because clearly this special town meeting will be 15 articles and I'm hoping obviously my goal is to finish it in one night. That is our goal. And I think it's very much achievable, of course. And we will go from there. Um, I also want uh, people to be aware in regard to ba the daycare that's provided. And one of the goals of the committee is also to get daycare uh, available for the entire meeting. Obviously, on night meetings, that's a little bit more difficult because, you know, if our meeting goes to 11 o'clock, it's sometimes difficult to have children out after 9 and that can be a little bit more difficult that way, but I know that the Board of Selectmen is working on that in regard to having daycare available to people throughout the whole town meeting so that you can be there and participate um, and not have to worry about child care. So they are working on that. Most of the time right now, child care typically ends around 9 o'clock. Again, it's a completely volunteer program. So for people to understand and respect, these are people who are volunteering. Um, and it's most of it is, I believe, the early ed education um, staff and t teachers and students up at the high school, as well as regular um, other high school teachers the, um, or elementary school teachers. The other thing is is that if you could call the Board of Selectmen's office and just report in that you're interested in having daycare so that they know that they can have availability and that people want the, ser the service available to them for that evening. So I thank you all for um, part of the special town meeting preview and for giving me an opportunity to explain some of the things that are going on with town meeting, which is very exciting. And hopefully we're going to have a robust um, debate that will be succinct, but also get information out so people can have, because isn't that the whole intent of town meeting? Get all the information on the, on the on floor so that people, people can make educated and informed decisions. So I hope to see you all on November 13, 2018 at 7 p.m. at the Kingston Intermediate School. Again, thank you. I'm Janet Wallace, moderator of the town of Kingston.